welcome to Bright Smith Women in Mobility series. Uh, today I'm joined by Jess Opetit. She is the UK country manager for Viavan. Uh, is kindly joining us today to talk about mobility, why we need more female voices in the sector, and giving some advice about uh, how the next generation can make that leap into mobility. So over to you, Jess, if you want to give us a bit of info on who you are, what you do at Viavan, and who they are. Cool. So hi, thanks for having me. I'm Jess. Um, and I guess a little bit of a, a quick intro. I sort of started my career in Australia as a lawyer and then management consultant. Um, I moved to the US to do an MBA at Harvard Business School, then spent a few years in Singapore working for Apple um, before joining VIA, where I currently work in early 2017. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with us, um, we provide uh, digital infrastructure to power public mobility in cities around the world. Um, so to date, we've partnered with sort of more than 100 cities, public transit agencies, transport operators, uh, corporations, and provided over 70 million rides. Um, and I'm currently our UK country manager, um, where I oversee sort of the UK sales and partnerships efforts, as well as our sort of launch and operations teams. Great. Sounds exciting. Um, and going back to, I guess you've talked a bit about what you did before, but why mobility? What was it that drew you to the sector? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I somewhat fell into mobility. So my sisters who were living in New York at the time had kind of kept raving about this company where they sort of were taking $5 rides in New York and they were sharing with lots of people, but they weren't detouring and it was incredible. I had to come and see it. And then I moved to London and sort of one of the first companies I came across that was sort of looking for their first hire in Europe was VIA. And sort of the, the rest you can kind of say was his, is sort of history. Um, and it's sort of funny because over the last, you know, three and a bit years, I think now you can definitely go into mobility. You know, three and a half years ago, mobility was sort of up and coming. There were a few companies playing in this space, but it has definitely gotten a lot sexier and a lot cooler. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's sort of by, by very good fortune that I, I sort of fell into mobility. And it seems like it's going well. <laughs> um, and why is it that you feel that we need more female voices in mobility? What what difference will that make? So, you know, mobility, you know, has, has historically just been a very, very male industry. If you think to like the leaders that exist in sort of the large train network, like rail networks, bus operators, you know, government departments, it, it, it's, it's true. And actually, to be, to be fair, even most of the big tech companies particularly in the UK, most of them are being led by men. When you think about mobility, it's really something that should be targeted at everyone. You know, accessibility, demographics, you know, mobility spans all of these things. And so in order to make sure that sort of the services that we're providing and, you know, the policies that, that are guiding these services are catered to everyone, you know, we should probably have a slightly more diverse group of people making these decisions and advising here. And so, you know, it's not just about women. I think it's about diversity more broadly um, but I think definitely having more female voices in this space can only help. I agree <laughs> um, and clearly you're very passionate about what you do and about the sector generally what is it that you love about your job about what you do? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a few things. I think VIA definitely ties into this, but I think the reason that I think mobility is, is something that I'm so passionate about, it, like I think the first is just the speed of innovation. You know, if you think about AVs, EVs, bookable seats, enhanced navigation, shared electric scooters, masks, like none of these things existed 10 years ago. And every week or every month, I read about a new interesting de development in this space. And so therefore, like the speed at which VIA has to innovate and I kind of have to stay on top of this stuff just makes it super interesting. I think the second is just the potential to have like real and lasting impact on society. You know, mobility touches social inclusion. It has a huge impact on the environment. It touches on accessibility. And, um, you know, having a positive impact on the world is definitely something you get to do in, in the mobility sector, which is another thing I really like. And sort of finally, the really nerdy side of me loves just the operational complexity of mobility. You know, it spans capital expenditure, supply demand matching, multimodal, intermodal, traffic management. You know, it's just a complicated, opera you know, the complicated operational list of things that you touch when working in mobility is sort of endless. A and as such, it's just a fascinating industry to, to work in. Amazing. And um, you touched there on kind of the speed at which it's changed already. And I think that's only going to keep getting faster. So what exciting things lie ahead? Yeah, so I, I mean, I touched on a few of these, but I think for me, like the transport sector, um, you know, 
is responsible for 30% of carbon emissions. And of that, more than 70% of that comes from, from road usage. And so for me, like anyone that's serious about climate change knows we have to displace single occupancy vehicles and the opportunities to do that. And I think I signed up somewhat mentioned some of them, but you know, AVs, shared mobility, EVs, micro mobility, mass congestion charging. They're just a handful of the sub, sub segments that are just sort of drastically growing in pursuit of this displacement of private car ownership. And I think the opportunities here are, are, are pretty endless. Great. And actually right back at the start, you talked about how three and a half years ago, mobility wasn't really an industry that you could get into as such. Um, and I think that for me is quite fascinating because gone are the days of you need 15 years experience in X to get a job in X. So I yeah. think we're in, um, we're in a really nice position that mobility is more accessible to more people because quite frankly, it didn't exist in the forms that it's in. So what advice would, would you give to either people looking for a career change or that next generation who see mobility as a, an option? How can they get into it and, and why? I mean, so I think the first part is important. I think like it's important to find something you're passionate about and something you're really proud to do. Like I'm incredibly proud of the work that we're doing at BIA. You know, we're improving accessibility, we're reducing emissions, we're more efficiently spending public money um, and improving social equity. And so I think that is the reason that I love my job. And I think it has to do with the passion more so than the industry. But let's just say you've decided that mobility is something that you really want to be passionate about. Um, then I, I think like, you know, there are a huge number of things that you can do to get into this space. I would say like first, like, you know, don't limit yourself to just like the shiny things that are being talked about on like, you know, TechCrunch, you know, the Department for Transport, Transport for London, any of the local or combined authorities, you know, the innovative and interesting work they're doing in this space, I think is incredibly fascinating. and would be a cool thing to be a part of. And the same can actually be said about a number of like the traditional bus and rail operators, you know, the stagecoach or Reavers go ahead groups of the world are doing also some really cool stuff. And then in sort of like, you know, there are also then on top of that thousands of new mobility tech companies who are allowing us, you know, to book seats, share rides, optimize routing in electric or autonomous or electric and autonomous cars or scooters or bikes or a mixture of all of these so that we can get sort of from A to B as quickly and cost effectively as possible. And so like, honestly, if, if you've ever wanted to get into the mobility sector, I don't think there's ever been an easier or more interesting time to do so. And, you know, any, in any of those categories, there are subcategories of companies working on, on things in this space and so I think it's literally just about doing a very small amount of research um, to find you know a company that you think is doing something interesting and and then sort of applying. I couldn't agree more and even just doing this series I keep coming across new companies every yeah. single day. So It's crazy. Yeah um, well thank you for your advice thank you for being a part of the series and sharing your passion with us because I think it's fairly evident that you're um, getting a lot out of a career in mobility um, so yes thank you uh, and we look forward to uh, continuing our partnership with you. No worries at all thanks for having me. Thank you.